Welcome to part 4 of the video series on how I constructed this arts and crafts style round table. This video focuses on the lower cross members. The authentic table features a pair of interlocking arched cross members that have an integral tenon, whereas the imposter table has a mortise that will receive a loose tenon. I use a horizontal router table from MLCS Woodworking to cut the tenons. What I have here is a test piece that's the same thickness as my lower cross members. I'll make a cut on both sides of the test board. What I'm trying to do is narrow in on the thickness that the tenon should be. So after cutting it on both sides, I'll try the fit in the mortise. That's a good fit. The first step in making the tenon is to make the cheek cut. I'll do this on the first side of the board and then flip it over and do the other side. Now there's two remaining cuts to make on this tenon called the shoulder cuts. It's the same method, but now we stand the board up on its edge and run it through the machine. The spiral upcut bit is a nice clean finish on the tenon. Flip the board over and make the fourth and final cut. That's a nice easy way to cut great looking tenons. After a successful dry fit, I'll make a mark that will let me know how much of the tenon protrudes through the leg. Later on, we'll chamfer all four edges of the end of this tenon. It's time to make the mortises and the end of the cross members for the imposter table. This will receive the loose tenon. So on the router table, I've mounted the piece into a tenon jig and I move it back and forth while raising the bit with the motorized router lift to cut the mortise. Nice crisp clean mortise every time. To cut the arch on all the cross members we will use a technique called pattern routing. I've made a pattern that will fit all four cross members out of half inch plywood. I trace this pattern onto each cross member and then cut it out on the bandsaw staying about a sixteenth of an inch outside the line. And then I'll mount the pattern to the workpiece using double sided tape. Using a bearing guided flush cut bit on the router table, I ride the bearing along the pattern and the workpiece is trimmed even with the pattern. Notice at the end here I'm in the tear out zone. I want to let up a little bit and make multiple passes in this area so the router bit doesn't tear out the grain. To make the cross members interlock I need to make a notch on each board. One board the notch is on the top, the other board the notch is on the bottom. The width of the notch is equal to the thickness of the stock for the cross members. Here I'm setting the blade height equal to that thickness. I'll make a cut on one side of the notch, move over and make a cut on the other side, and then remove the material in the middle with subsequent cuts. After removing all the material, I can move the workpiece back and forth and clean out the dado. The only setup difference on the second piece is the height of the blade.
two pieces should fit together nice and tight. That's a good fit. Now it's time to chamfer off the ends of the through tenons. I'll make the long cuts with the chamfer bit on the router table and the short cuts using a file. Well that does it for this part of the video, but I invite you to check out the all new Eagle Lake Woodworking to see the rest of the videos in this series and videos on other woodworking topics. You can access all parts of the videos in one easy viewer. Check out the photo galleries of in process work, measured drawings, and finished projects. You can also download files associated with projects. So check it out at www.eaglelakewoodworking.com.